This time on Floss Weekly, Gareth Greenaway and I talk to the developers of Weave, a great way of managing your containers on Docker and getting them to talk to each other. That's coming up next on Floss Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E. FLY.com. This is Floss Weekly, episode 339, recorded June 3rd, 2015. Weave. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out Braintree v.0 SDK. With one simple integration, you get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash floss. And by DigitalOcean, simple, fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit digitalocean.com. And once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS, that's F-L-O-S-S, in the billing section for a $10 credit. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free Libre open source software. I'm your host for this week. My name is Dan Lynch, and I'm calling in from Liverpool in the UK, in the northwest of the UK. Um, the keen-eyed amongst you will notice that I'm not Randall Schwartz. Uh, unfortunately, Randall is under the weather this week. He's not feeling so well, so uh, we send him our best wishes. I uh, parachuted in at the last minute. Not literally. That would have damaged the ceiling. Um, <laughs> I parachuted in at the last minute uh, to uh, to take the reins today. So it, it's great to be here. Uh, I've got a co host with me as always and today it's gareth greenaway gareth how you doing hey i'm good dan thanks for having me glad to be back no problem and uh are you in your secret bunker again i am as in randall calls bunker it. In, in thousand oaks california uh, um, deep underground <laughs> Excellent. That's good to know. Um, yeah, so uh, today's guest, we've got uh, Weave is our guest project. Uh, we're going to talk to um, to two of the developers from Weave. Um, I've only, I have to admit, because I did parachute in at the last minute, I've only had a quick look at Weave, but um, it's to do with Docker and integration of, uh, of your apps and moving them easily between instances and portability, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. Um, Gareth, do you, do you know any more about this than I do? Um, just a little bit. From what I've I've gathered um, in my my brief research of it, um, it it looks like it's orchestration for Docker instances and and applications and and making it easier to get your applications into Docker containers and um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's Excellent. basically what I, I I gleaned from reading about it. Yes, yeah, similar to what I gleaned from it. But then, luckily, that's why the guests are here, to tell us about the project. So, thankfully, we can we can ask them to fill in the gaps for us, which should be good. Um, so, before we get into the show, um, I'd like to uh, mention our sponsor for today and uh, thank them. So, um, yeah, uh, Braintree. This uh, episode is brought to you by Braintree, uh, code for easy online payments. If you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. Braintree V.0 SDK makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types. Uh, start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, uh, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a single integration. Uh, it offers simple, secure payments and code you can integrate in minutes. Um, yeah, and there's all kinds of cool stuff on there. Uh, it's 10 lines of in-app code, so it's it's really you know simple to integrate and get to, uh, get to work with. So Braintree offers you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one integration. Quick, knowledgeable developer for support if you have any questions. Uh, start accepting Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and whatever's next, all with a single integration. With Braintree V.0 SDK, one simple snippet of code, and you're, uh, you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. Uh, to learn more and get your first $50,000 in transactions for free, that's free of fees, that's excellent, uh, you can go to braintreepayments.com slash floss. That's braintreepayments.com com slash floss and we thank them for their support of floss weekly and with that i think we should uh, find out more about weave and what it's all about so um i need to welcome our guests um we have Ilya dimitri uh, which i nearly messed up although i got it right in the intro uh before we started and um yeah and brian borum as well so um hello guys how are you doing hi how are you hello Excellent. So I'm going to um, I'm going to ask you where you're coming from. I'll do it one by one to make it easier. So Ilya, where where are you speaking to us from? Uh, London. London. Excellent. 
the, the right side of the of the Atlantic. No, I shouldn't say that. I'll get in trouble. Um, <laughs> but the uh, my side of the Atlantic, should we say? And uh, Brian, where are we speaking to you from? Yeah, I'm, I work with Ilya, so uh, we're both in London, in, in Shoreditch, in the the kind of uh, startup central in London. Ah, the Silicon Roundabout, as it's been it's been nicknamed yeah. by a few people. Um, excellent. Okay, so uh, you got Silicon Valley, we got Silicon Roundabout over here. Uh, but uh, yeah, very uh, very cool area. I know it quite well. Excellent. All right. And so um, the first thing we need to do is kind of um, establish exactly what Weave is and and um, how it works and who it's for and stuff. So um, I don't know if either of you want to take that one first. Who who feels confident about that? What do you think? Shall I go? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so Brian, take it away. Um, Weave is a suite of, of tools to work with Docker containers. Um, so uh, it's all about uh, connecting, observing, and, and controlling those containers. Um, I don't know, do you, do you think I should say a little bit about Docker, or would, would your audience know quite a lot about that already? Um, we had Docker on on show 330, but it's always worth explaining these things. If you can give us a very quick kind of overview, that'd be brilliant, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the basic idea is is uh, it's in the space called Linux containers. And um, uh, you can think of a container as like a, a very lightweight uh, virtual machine. It's not really a virtual machine, but it gives the same kind of idea. You can isolate your uh, your applications. Um, they They don't clash with each other. And, uh, and Docker also gives a very neat deployment uh, mechanism. So, so that's why they, they talk about it like a shipping container. You package everything up into one container, you um, deliver that to the, the target where it's going to run, and, and you unpack it, and it, it just works. Very, very portable. Um, Docker will, will run on any modern Linux, and uh, you can just bring your, bring your files um, into those containers and run your application and uh, run on, on any Linux um, uh, mm -hmm. just like that. So um, uh, I guess uh, Weave, um, Weave is all about connecting those containers together. Uh, first thing you notice if you use Docker, if you run several containers is, is kind of getting them to talk to each other across uh, TCP sockets, that kind of thing. Um, it's a little fiddly. Uh, Docker provides a way to do it, but it kind of involves environment variables and port mapping and stuff like that. Um, we've one of the, the first things we delivered was a was a network, a software network that um, gives your containers their own network. Um, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of application focused. Uh, application developer can run up their own network connect their containers together, and they'll just uh, talk to each other. Um, we're moving on. We, we um, recently added a thing called Weave Scope, which lets you uh, uh, bring up a graphical display of, of what's running, what, what all your containers are doing, and um, plan to extend that further with more services and facilities. Um, like I say, the, the kind of the the phrase, the mission statement is uh, connect, observe, and control. Hmm. Excellent. And, and if I if I if I gathered right from that, basically my kind of simple um, takeaway from that was was what you were saying is because you, you you've got lots of containers obviously in, in your Docker stuff and you want to manage a lot of them at once. You maybe want to move them all somewhere else. You want to do God knows what uh, kind of operations on them. And this gives me an easy way to kind of tie them together. I'm getting why you called it Weave now. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so this thing that, that the containers will run anywhere. Um, a developer uh, is is probably going to build and test and run a lot of containers on their own machine, maybe even on their laptop. Then they might want to deploy on a on a cloud on on Amazon or uh, Google Cloud, something like that. And um, getting those facilities for managing uh, distributed applications at scale. Um, in a in a cloud kind of a way, but in a portable way. So you you do the same stuff on your laptop as you do at Google mm -hmm. Cloud. Say um, that's a kind of a real trick. And uh, the 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 thing that we're really aiming for is to make all those kind of things very very easy, um, very simple to uh, to get going, simple to fire the thing up, tear it down. Um, so everything runs in a container is another thing. So so what we do is all isolated as well. 
Mm. And um, Docker, I mean, Docker's been around for a little while. It, it's very, very popular at the moment. It's one of the hot kind of projects that everyone's uh, everyone's chasing after and, and wants to know more about. So how old is Weave and, and how did it get started? Uh, Weave was launched um, mid-September last year, so not quite uh, not quite a year old. Um how did it get started? The uh, the founders of, of Weave, or Weave Works is the name of the company, um, uh, Alexis and Matthias uh, were the, the founders of RabbitMQ, uh, which is another um, open source uh, project that I, I guess many people will have heard of. Um, mm-hmm. And RabbitMQ was, was purchased by VMware. And uh, so uh, uh, Alexis and Matthias had a... Um, quite a lot of experience in that environment trying to build uh, distributed applications which had to be very robust, very reliable. Um, and they, uh, uh, they got into Docker. They, you know, they, they, they saw Docker. They saw it as uh, one of the, the key things that's going to um, be really central to the, the next wave of, of cloud computing development. Uh, so they saw the opportunity to... Um, to add on to Docker to deliver those facilities that uh, application developers would want and uh, form the company to do that. Excellent. And um, Ilya, I don't want to, I don't really ignore you there. I feel I'm being rude here, just asking all the questions to Brian. So um, who who's using Weave right now? What, what kind of, uh, what's your kind of target audience, if you like, and, and what kind of things are they doing with it that's exciting? Sure. So there are, there are a few commercial customers uh, and there are some open source projects based around the right so uh, on the on the open source side one uh, very interesting recent announcement had been uh, a project called apollo uh, and it uses uh, mesos and it is essentially an orchestrator for docker so it is essentially a mesos framework that utilizes a bunch of other open source projects and uh, <clears throat> Vue is what they've picked for um, for the networking. Uh, I myself build integration for Kubernetes, which is another high-level orchestrator similar to Apollo. And uh, there are um, uh, various uh, people in the community who build a small, some smaller projects. Uh, and we have a couple of production customers who who actually build commercial products on the, on Vue. And uh, those are Tutum and Cloud sixty six. Um, Tutum is a platform as a service for um, developers who chose to use containers to ship their applications and they just want to run them somewhere and Tutum provides a way of deploying clusters of um, dockerized applications in different clouds. Uh, Similarly, Mm. uh, Cloud66 has a kind of platform as a service offering like this, however, they they, they, they go slightly different level um, and the approach is generally quite different. Uh, so there is um, there are production systems running on Vive, and uh, yeah, and we, we have more coming. So these are the two that mm. we have publicly announced so far, and mm-hmm. uh, we every other week we find a new open source project that uses it. Excellent, and um, obviously you're um, tied in quite closely to Docker. So do you have a strong relationship with the Docker developers and the community there? I imagine. Yeah, sure. We we working very closely with Docker, and uh, we we are working on the introducing native networking extensions into Docker Core. Excellent. And we have our first question from IRC. I'm frantically scrolling up the page here because I've uh, I've lost it. There we go. And um, so we have um, a question from the Andromedan. I think you would pronounce that. Um, who asks, uh, will Weave add support for either Vagrant or Rockets? I don't know who wants to take that one, but feel free. Um, I, I can uh, I can take that. Uh-huh. I mean, we we work very closely with um, Docker, as Ilya was saying, but there's there's actually very little in the um, uh, in the software of, of Weave that that is tied to Docker, um, it's is really just in the in the interfaces. So, um, so certainly, uh, both of those things are are possible. Um, I uh, we've we've looked at a, a bit. Of it. uh, it's um, uh, it's it's kind of an interesting project coming along. Um, we haven't. Uh, we haven't shipped either of those integrations. Uh, we do um, 
one of our one of our contributors, one of our contributors that doesn't work for WeWorks, uh, Alex Bly, uh, has uh, his interest is in 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 using Weave to connect up um, virtual machines that are not containers, not using Docker. Um, so it's it's certainly something that other people in the community are working on. Uh, but but I mean, you know, straight answer to the question, we we don't have an integration with. Um, Vagrant or Rocket right now. Uh, it's certainly possible, and uh, you know, it's it's. We'd love to. If anyone's really interested in that and wants to contribute to an open source project, then uh, we'd certainly love to to see a pull request for that. So, if I have um, like an existing Docker setup today, and and I'm actively using it, how easy is it to to kind of to to introduce Weave into that equation? Sure. I mean, ease of use is, uh, is our primary focus. So to install Vive, you just need to download the shell script that you put somewhere in your path, and then you launch the router, and you, you can run containers on Vive. So there's Vive launch, Vive run, and you're up and running, essentially. So that's uh, that's pretty easy, and that's our primary focus, to be honest. And all the pieces that, that we introduce, uh, like uh, service discovery and DNS and uh, scope, they all shift as containers. All you, you should need is the the Vive script that that knows where to find those containers and uh, how to start them. And what, another thing we we really uh, developer does not have to change their source code. Um, so so Weave provides a network. It's it's really a software implementation of an Ethernet switch. So so anything that runs on top of your normal network will run on top of Weave. Um, Ilya just mentioned service discovery. How do you find out where something's running? And we we don't uh, we actually implement that by by using the DNS protocol. So uh, you don't have to change your software because everything already speaks DNS. Um, so that's a kind of a pattern that that we uh, uh, we want to let people carry on exactly the way they have developed software in the past. We don't want to give them a new set of APIs, new set of tooling. We don't want to do any of that. We just want to fit right in there and uh, make things easier. So if I'm, if, like I said, if I'm, I'm using an existing Docker setup and, and I go to introduce Weave, is it possible through, does, does Weave have some sort of API um, connection that I can I can write my own software that sits on top of Weave? Or do I have to kind of use Weave as it is? Yeah, well, the, the main way you interact with Weave um, uh, we we provide a, a command line interface, so you can you can run those commands, you know, from from anywhere uh, that can run commands. Um, the uh, I mean, because we are in in the mode where we're connecting things together, um, then then basically the only thing you you want to do is either attach your your software to the network or detach it from the network, um, and. Uh, uh, those involve a few bits of um, machinations with the with the Linux networking stack. So, um, so basically, uh, running our command line interface is is really the the way to go with that. When you get into um, the other parts of the system, like like for instance, service discovery, uh, uh, like I say, the API is DNS. You know, you you um, uh, if you want to find where something is, you you hit our um, port fifty three on our. DNS container, and it'll tell you the answer. Um, there are a few things uh, where we have a, like a REST interface, uh, um, sending data over HTTP uh, in a more of an administrative nature. But um, uh, mostly, um, it's either just running commands or um, the using interfaces like TCP and DNS that are already built into your software. Cool. Um, so we we talked a lot about uh, Weave and Docker. Uh, does Weave rely or depend on any other technology um, to do its job? Uh, essentially, no. There is uh, there is everything uh, in in our software that that you need to run it. There is no secondary package that you would need to install as such. So um, uh, yeah, there is no uh, external database that, that Beave has to talk to or anything of that sort. Can it be tied into to use existing um, technology, say something like etcd or, or console? 
Sure. I mean, uh, we even at CD or console can be used together in uh, in various different ways, and uh, our users had been telling us about uh, very interesting approaches there. So, yeah, I wouldn't be able to to classify that right now. There's there's like you can use it one way or the other, and uh, people find uses for um, various interesting things at times. Cool. Uh, so, if I wanted to get started using Weave, uh, what's the best approach right now? So if you just go to our repository on GitHub, it's uh, github.com slash vivework slash vive. You will find a readme there and all the instructions are there. You can otherwise look at more high level guides on our home page, which is uh, vive.works slash guides. And you will find uh, things like how do I run vive with Nginx on AWS or digital option instead, whichever you prefer, and the guides of that nature there. Okay. Um, so that's a lot of this works. That's weave.works slash guides. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, so one of the, like one of the areas that we've we've kind of focused a lot on um, in the discussion has been around kind of the networking of Docker and Docker instances and and how Weave is is fitting into that and helping making that easier. How does Weave compare with kind of the 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 broader software defined networking space? Well, uh, let me have a go at that. The, the um, software defined networking, uh, most of the vendors in that space uh, take as their starting point that they, they want to replace um, a full on enterprise network. Uh, you know, that they're, they're going to go head to head with Cisco and do all the things that Cisco can do and then be. Uh, software defined, so so they're incredibly flexible um, on top of all that. Um, Weave takes a takes a very very different approach, very application focused. So we're we're not uh, we're not claiming to be able to run your entire enterprise. We we are claiming to to make it a lot easier to put applications together um, using things like containers and Docker. So. Um, uh, it's a very different starting point. We um, we try as far as possible to uh, to make it so that you don't need uh, you know knobs to turn and, and things to tweak and so on. Um, whereas those enterprise products, they 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 tend to start with a huge list of, of features and knobs and controls and and um, uh, and then in order to run the thing, you need a very big control screen and and um, you know, the, the, it's just a very different philosophy. We want, want to make it very easy, um, mm -hmm. download the thing, run it, it's up and running. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, we think those 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 products, those SDN uh, full-on enterprise products are great. And uh, uh, you do need, uh, you know, the, the, those real full-on networks. Um, but in, in our space, it's very, very application-focused, uh, and on, on a much smaller scale. Do you guys have plans to tie into any of the existing um, kind of open source networking technologies like uh, Open vSwitch or even like the Cumulus uh, hardware switches? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've we've taken a look at a, a number of those things, and um, uh, uh, I think um, I guess we don't have any firm kind of news to announce uh, on, on that front, but uh, there is definitely some, some interesting areas and uh, particularly integrating with the um, kernel data paths uh, that can, can give us performance. Um, not, not so much on the specialized hardware, but uh, yeah, it could happen. Okay. Um, so what other, is there any other kind of, open source or closed um, source projects that you know that are, are using Weave existing, or is it is it too early kind of in the uh, in its development? Or... Um, yes, you about open source projects? Yeah, if any like existing open source projects or even closed closed source products are using Weave. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, one one of those that I mentioned earlier is uh, is a, a, a container orchestrator called Apollo by Capgemini, and uh, 
they they have picked Weave because it was easiest to use. There is a another open source project called Container, which is um, also slightly different uh, kind of orchestrator, but uh, it also uses Weave and um, they 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 have more like a drop in approach rather than others. So so Apollo, you could potentially uh, need to plan a cluster ahead of time and then you deploy these new machines and uh, there will be your Apollo machines that run Mesos and Zookeeper and Console and uh, a, co a couple of other things that you would need for a full-scale orchestrator like this. However, Contena is uh, a, a different type of orchestrator where you just install an agent on every Docker host and whatever, whatever you've got there, it doesn't really matter what operating system you're using, you have chosen that already, you can just start Contena agents and uh, those docker hosts will, will be will be joined uh, in this cluster where you can deploy containers to and they have big be for networking there too no no not excellent oh, is, uh, sorry um, carry on yeah i just i thought i'd, I'd throw in uh, there's a, a kind of a, a cloud hosting uh, provider called cloud 66 another commercial uh, user of our of our product Excellent. And that leads me in quite well, actually, uh, Brian, because I, I, great discussion so far, really interesting. Uh, we have to stop for just a second while we uh, pay the bills, as Randall says. Um, so I just got to read a quick ad. Um, but actually, it, it links in perfectly because um, I think you've already mentioned them. DigitalOcean uh, are one of our sponsors for today. So um, whether you're an experienced code warrior or just getting started and you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting, DigitalOcean provides developers with droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed to host websites, web apps, production applications, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access. And um, in the interests of, uh, I suppose, journalistic integrity on this one, um, I, I signed up with DigitalOcean last night so I could actually know something about what we were what we were discussing. And um, I can confirm that you can agree, you can indeed sign up and use our code FLOSS, which I'll tell you more about in a minute, to get uh, ten dollars of credit with DigitalOcean. Um, I, I went there, signed up last night. It was uh, Pretty simple, very quick and easy to do. Um, I set up a, a new um, a new droplet uh, with, uh, I think I chose Ubuntu, but they've got a great selection of OSs there. Obviously, you've got lots of different Linux distributions like Ubuntu and CentOS and Debian, of course, and, and, and others. But they've also got BSD, which I know Randall's a big fan of, and um, is a, obviously a well-established, uh, popular, and very secure uh, server network, uh, server uh, operating system. So if you want to use FreeBSD or something like that, you can just click a button in the in the panel and it will fire you up a new uh, a new droplet with FreeBSD as well, which is pretty cool because um, not not so many um, hosts provide that as as easily out the box. Um, yep, there's also a web console which um, I uh, I used last night, which is quite interesting. So once you've fired up your um, your new droplet, uh, you can actually then click in your um, in your web browser in your user control panel. You can then click a button and get straight into a VNC session where you're actually seeing the output, obviously the screen from your uh, from your droplet, so you can get straight into it, which I found was quite interesting. Obviously, you've got SSH access and other things as well, which I would probably use more often, but that's a really nice feature to be able to just click on it and and start doing stuff in a, in a terminal straight away. And you've got full access as well, which is awesome. Um, so, DigitalOcean has an incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing uh, scheme. Servers start at $5 per month. Um, there's also even uh, hourly pricing, if you want to do hourly pricing, which is interesting, uh, which starts at less than one penny per hour. Um, but we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. Um, to do that, you need to visit digitalocean.com. And uh, that's digitalocean.com, and create yourself uh, a new account on there. Uh, once you confirm your email and some of your account information, um, you can go to the billing section in the uh, control panel in the settings there, and uh, you can enter the promo code FLOSS. That's F L O S S, FLOSS, and you get yourself uh, $10 of free credit. So you can have two months, a $5 droplet for two months uh, for free to try it out, which is great. It's, it's a plenty of time to have a play with it and get used to it and uh, find out more. So go to digitalocean.com and use our code, which is FLOSS, F L O S S, in the billing section and get yourselves uh, $10 of free credit. So thank you to DigitalOcean for uh, helping to support. And um, keeping on that tip, you, you did mention DigitalOcean before. So are they already, um, that you can use Weave presumably on top of DigitalOcean already? Yes, absolutely. And I do think they have uh, some images where Docker is pre-installed. So you, you should be quite quite quick to spin up and then you just need to install Weave, which, is, which takes 
few seconds and mm. uh, yeah, you, you should be ready to go in, in minutes. Yeah. Excellent. So it fits in perfectly. All right, then I'll stop dragging you guys into the into the ad reads as well, and get back to the back to the topic uh, of Weave now. So I, I was having a look at um, some of the information on Weave before, and I noticed. I don't know whether you guys will be um, in in a position to answer this. Uh, maybe maybe the founders of the project might know better. But I noticed that it's it's all written in Go, the um, the Google language, um, and I was curious what made Go a good choice for this, and how you find working with Go. I don't know if you, who who wants to go for that though. No pun intended. Um, I, uh, as Brian here, I, I was um, employee number three after the founders, and uh, uh, software was already written go when I joined. So um, I can't, I can't speak to the details, but um, uh, we we do find it very, very effective for writing this kind of software, software that that needs to be very concurrent, uh, needs to be very uh, efficient. Um, go. Uh, Go is is also a great a great developer's language, I think, because um, it's very very straightforward. Uh, you can you can pick up a page of Go written by anyone and and figure out what's going on immediately. I personally uh, have a lot of background in C plus um, plus, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty much the opposite statement that you could make about C plus plus. That that you know, depending on where. <laughs> someone's coming mm. from, you can pick up their code and, and just have absolutely no idea uh, what they're doing with templates and, and, and things like that. Um, so, uh, so that's my experience. This, this was my first goal project. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I had to learn very quickly, but uh, um, it's been great. Uh, Docker's written in Go, I guess. Uh, you know, that, not that that makes any... Um, mm. Big deal. There's, you know, there's no, there's no kind of uh, intimate tie-ins or anything like that. But it, um, uh, Go seems to be very popular in in this kind of ecosystem, um, and we we do find it very, very effective. Mm. And uh, you, obviously, you mentioned C plus plus, and and uh, obviously the C as well. You would imagine with its kind of low level kind of integration with the kernel and other things, they might go for something like C plus plus or, or C. I suppose would make sense for the Linux kernel. But and lots of people are using Go, and as you say, Docker written in Go, so um, obviously good for these kind of tasks. I was just curious. It's not a platform. Of, uh, sorry, it's not a language that I've really gotten into yet. So uh, I uh, I'll have to do that at some point. Um, so uh, we should talk a bit about kind of organizational stuff and like licenses, because that's really exciting. And uh, I get excited about licenses. I'm the only person in the world who does, I think. Um, so uh, so uh, what licenses is uh, is Weave under, and why? Yeah, it's, it's under the Apache license. Um, it is it is a fully open source um, product, and, and we want it to be as open and flexible as possible. Um, so uh, it's it's all under the Apache license. Um, you know that that means that that you can uh, download it and use it. You can uh, you know have to uh, get into big debates with your legal team or anything like that. And um, mm -hmm. and also if you want to if you want to contribute, um, we have a very simple uh, um, DCO developer certification. You you know you don't have to. Uh, write any any legal documentation on that side. You you just um, certify that that uh, who you are and, and that you uh, mean to be contributing this um, uh, whatever it is you're contributing to the project. And um, mm. yeah, we we wanted to make that as easy as everything else. Uh, so um, pick the Apache license and uh, and the the DCO model. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something I, I was going to ask about. Are you using, um, do you use Git or anything? Like, how can people kind of contribute? What's the mechanism for that? Yeah, projects on GitHub. Um, so github.com slash okay. weaveworks slash weave. Um, the, uh, well, I should say weave, weave is the, the, the first project, the network, the other, our other projects like scope and so on have their own directories. Um, the we do use git uh internally when when we're um working on it but um uh so yeah i mean you, your question was if somebody wants to contribute um mm -hmm. they uh they can contribute in in lots of different ways you know we have uh we have people who come along and say i spotted a typo in the documentation and all the way through to people saying i i really felt it needed this feature so here's the code um 
we uh, so if if you see something wrong with it, you can just raise an issue uh, on the new issue button on on GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, we try to turn those around very very quickly. Um, if you want to contribute something, um, raise a pull request, and uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll usually make a few um, comments and try and try and make sure everything fits in with the style and the quality that, that we try to maintain. But uh, yeah, we, we try to be very approachable and um, mm. uh, accept contributions and, and turn things around quickly. Uh, we're also on uh, IRC, um, mm -hmm. on uh, Hashweave Network. Um, if you want to raise a shout or um, uh, find our email address on the weave.works homepage. And is there anything particular, um, I'm sure, obviously, I know the way the open source world works. I'm sure you'll take any help on any uh, on anything people want to want to help contribute and, and, and work on. But is there anything particular that you guys are kind of looking for? Maybe someone watching or listening to this thinks, oh, I know about that, and I could help with, with certain things. Is there anything particular, maybe? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Nothing... Uh... Immediately, uh, I guess one of the one of the things um, we we find hardest to know is is what people are doing with it. Uh, it's it's a funny thing, you know. You put the software up there, and and it has uh, it gets downloaded like thousands of times a day, um, and uh, uh, we don't know what people are doing with it. We we occasionally. Um, well, quite often you bump into people at a at a, a meetup or a conference or something like that, and say they say, "Hey, I'm using Weave and I love it." Um, but besides that, uh, just knowing what people want uh, is is one of the hardest things. So, um, would very much uh, encourage people to try it out and and just you know just just write a note saying, "I I thought it was going to do this and it didn't," or "I I." Um, I see what you're doing here, but it could be better if you did it this way. Um, that is one of the one of the things we we uh, find hardest to uh, to know what people are actually doing with the software. We we have our own projects within um, within the WeaveWorks uh, company um, that that uh, we're adding certain flexibility and and working on performance and. Um, Trying to broaden out the uh, the offering, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good question you raise, and I I, I couldn't I couldn't put my finger on um, one specific thing that that I'd really uh, encourage people to jump on. So one of the things I was wondering about um, you've you've talked a lot about um, Weave being a, an open source project, and all the code, including for Weave and Weave Scope, is is on GitHub. And anyone can download it. It's it's under the Apache license, um, but Weave is also a company. Um, you guys recently got a, a round of funding, and and you talked about your co-founders or your, your founders rather. Um, how if if all the code and all the the everything you're you're doing is all open source, how does Weave as the company attempt to make money? What what's your what's the goal there? Yeah, we're we're not at that part of the. Um... The growth. We're, we're still growing the company in a in a purely open source model uh, right now, um, but we uh, we will have um, uh, things that, that that we hope people will want to pay for. Um, uh, the obvious one is is support. Um, you know, people who are uh, using this thing in production. A lot of them will just feel more comfortable if they have a contract and and they're paying for it and they they uh, um, feel better that way. That that's you know that's very much the the kind of the red model. Um, and obviously the founders having done RabbitMQ, that was a, that was another open source project uh, along very similar lines in terms of charging for for support. Um, we we're still working on on. To what extent uh, you can you can have enterprise features alongside open source features in a product like this? Um, it's a very uh, tricky line to to walk um, because you don't want to uh, uh, you don't want to render the open source project useless by by taking something out that that everyone's going to need. Um, and 
so you know that's that's uh, that's for the future. That's um, something that that we'll work on and evolve. Uh, we, um, uh, we 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 certainly have people coming to us and and saying, um, you know, how what can I buy? You know, can I buy a support contract? And and uh, uh, like I say, we're just we're not at that point yet. We're still um, really uh, trying to grow the offer and grow the the, the community as a, a pure open source play. Um, at the moment, and and obviously the great thing about open source is is once it's out there, we you know what we publish under that model we can't take back. Um, we have to add more uh, that people are going to want to um, pay for uh, at that point in the journey. So one of the questions that Dan asked um, was around con- con- contributions to the project. Um, so. Who, do, who decides who makes the final call on if someone contributes a, a feature or a, um, or, or a patch, uh, who, who kind of makes the final decision on whether or not that, that feature or that, that patch gets into, uh, the weave code? Well, uh, there haven't been too many arguments. Uh, I, I, um, well, maybe I should rephrase that. I mean, we 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 have a lot of arguments uh, within the team about the best way to do things, and um, and sometimes those those arguments involve outside contributors. But it's it's all in the in the name of of trying to deliver a better quality product. Um, I, I I guess uh, technically, um, uh, Matthias, uh, who's the CTO, would uh, would have final say, but. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's it's really come to that. It's it's um, it's been something that, that it's kind of a, a more of a discussion, um, and uh, we we try and try and do the right thing in the end. Sure. Um, so I I had a question and I totally spaced on it. Um, oh. That's okay. I can I can jump in if you like. Yeah, I'll, jump in, uh, I'll I'll jump in. Yeah, no problem. I, I I've done that quite a lot quite a lot of times myself. And the question just goes. We actually actually to save us, we have a question from the IRC channel. As we're talking right now, um, IRC is uh, is kind of um, is you know working away there, and uh, they always provide great questions. So I have one about security actually. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit. So. Um, yeah, this one says, uh, sysadmin here. Uh, so it says, uh, I was trying to understand the security parts, the security part included with Weave. I read their crypto page, but didn't understand it too well. I guess I'm used to the VPN and or SSH key exchanges. You guess it used to VPN, sorry, and or SSH key exchanges. So my question at the end of all this, is, uh, they say, is how secure is Weave and how does the security work? Shall I? Do you want to have a go at that, or shall I try, try and? I I think that maybe split the uh, split the answer into into two parts. Um, sure. We've uh, we've set up a, a, a software network, what 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 we call an overlay network, um, running on top of. Um, some underlying network, uh, and we we rely on TCP and UDP on the uh, on the underlying network. Um, so if you set up your underlying path uh, using something like IPsec, um, then uh, that's going to have all of those security features, and you um, don't need to worry about what what Weave is going to do. Um, so for people uh, who are really looking for a um, Battle-tested uh, security product. Um, something in in that space um, is going to be much easier to uh, to kind of talk about and 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 look at. You know how how many years has that been out there, and who's beaten it up, and how many security bugs have been found lately, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we do have inside the weave. Product um, the uh, the facility to uh, encrypt the communications, and um, if you use that facility, then uh, what you do is you give a you give us a, a shared secret uh, to all the nodes on the network. Um, it's very simple uh, to set up. Um, 
but it's you know it's not something we we kind of leave that up to the user about how they're going to get that secret out there how they're going to protect that secret um in terms of you know they they need to get it installed on all the machines um so uh you know that's that's not the um that's not the 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 well okay let's let's backtrack on that so the the um <laughs> the weave built in encryption uh is is set up in a much simpler way um it is using the uh the knackle uh library you know we didn't write our own um secure actual encryption algorithm or anything like that uh that's a um that's an open source uh, uh you know fairly well respected um implementation um and your questioner was talking about the the encryption page you know we we do we do lay out a lot of detail about about what what that work how that works on the wire there's um there's a series of operations where uh the, the two sides are are um kind of shifting the uh what's called the nonce the 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 bit that in the in the kind of guts of the encryption algorithm that that is uh uh, changing over time, so that that an attacker would find it hard to um, analyze the traffic and and decrypt it. But you don't, you know, you don't need to understand at that level of detail. The 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 key things. Um, number one, you know, if you're really uh, uh, hot on on getting a really high level of guarantee of your network security, run Weave on top of something like IPsec. It'll work fine. Uh, if you want to use our, our simple but effective um, encryption, uh, what you should know is you need to get a, um, a a shared key, a shared secret onto every node, um, and then we take that key and we use the the Knackle, uh library to to run encryption. Um, those are the key points, I think. Hmm. Excellent. And that, that was quite a difficult question. So, um, so kudos to you for, uh, for answering that as fully as you did. Um, it w- was a, a tricky one. Um, I've got another, well, I say potentially tricky question, I suppose. Um, it, it, we're kind of jumping around on topics here, but just going back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier with contributions and um, um, agreement licenses, all that kind of stuff. You mentioned um, that you've gone from the model with... Um, uh, an agreement, a developer agreement that people um, presumably sign or whatever and agree to um, when they contribute. Does that include copyright assignment? How does how does that work? Because I know that's quite difficult for a lot of open source projects. We've got uh, obviously different conflicting opinions on which is best. You've got like the Linux kernel where everybody retains their own copyright. Each developer makes it difficult to relicense, or some would say almost impossible to relicense later on. Or then you've got other com- uh, companies and developers and so on who, who say you must assign your copyright to us, therefore we'll decide if we want to change license later on um, so d- does it include a copyright assignment i suppose is my question it's uh it's the same what uh, the linux kernel folks do it's the dco model ah, know, okay. certificate excellent. origin mm-hmm. well, excellent, really excellent. Making it easy for everyone yeah so and, no, it, and it, no, it's obviously that's a sorry go on guys there's no there's no copyright assignment, right the the um uh it's a, yeah, just as Ilya said, it's you're certifying mm-hmm. that that uh, you created it and uh, that you have the right to contribute it, but but we don't um, yeah. we're not requiring any more than that. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent, uh, and obviously a model that everybody knows pretty well because Linux Linux kernel being you know twenty something years old now at this point. Um, okay, so we are kind of getting towards uh, the end of our allotted time for the show, but I wanted to make sure that we've covered all the things that that you guys wanted to mention. So, is there anything that maybe we haven't asked you about, or anything that you want to tell us about Weave that you think um, we need to we should get in there before we run out of time? Well. Oh. Uh, I do think that that we should we should uh, mention our uh, latest addition to, to to the project family, the VScope, yeah. which is the visualization tool, whereby you can fire up an instance of it on the Docker host, and uh, you can observe all the containers you have there without having to declare them up front. So it will just look at the Docker API, it will look at other processes running, it will look at the network traffic, and uh, build a diagram of uh, your application. And you can just look at it and decide 
what's going on there. And uh, that, that really helps developers who just jump into Docker. They, they've fired up a bunch of containers and then they actually still not totally familiar with Docker and they're not sure where, where to look for every little detail. Mm. Our uh, scope tool can visualize that for you. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Check it out. It's, uh, it's still very recent and we are looking forward to, to hear from the users how they like it, how they find it. And uh, yeah, to check out scope as well as VeepNet. Excellent. And um, uh, Brian, anything you want to you mention quickly or you, uh, have we covered pretty much everything? Uh, I, yeah, I'd certainly underline, uh, take a look at Weave Scope. Uh, it brings mm -hmm. up a GUI in a, in a browser. Uh, it's kind of, kind of fun um, thing to, to, to look at, and you may even learn something about your, your application. You didn't realize it, it communicated in certain ways. Um, mm -hmm. Weave, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's been a, an exciting time working with the company. Um, so, uh, I, I, you never quite know what's going to happen next. The whole, the whole ecosystem, the whole Docker ecosystem and, and, uh, products, um, coming along, uh, the people are releasing new things to work with Docker every week. And, and we have to, to try and keep up with that, um, can be a full-time job, but, uh, we're, we're always aiming to be the, um, simplest and, and easiest way to, uh, to build your applications using containers. Excellent. And um, I have to ask our, uh, our favorite two questions. I don't know if, you, if you've seen the show before. And uh, we have two questions that we ask to every guest at, at the end. Um, and I know Randall gets a lot, of, uh, a lot of messages from people if we don't ask them. Uh, people like to hear about this. So uh, I guess we'll take it in turn. So Ilya, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Um, what's your favorite scripting language? If you had to pick one, oh, sorry, was okay. I muted? Was I muted again? Uh, uh, I was saying right. Python. Python. Oh, Python. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how about um, text editor? What's your favorite kind of coding environment or text editor? Uh, yeah, mostly use Veeam. I tried Sublime, but mm -hmm. like it. That's cool. I, I like Vim as well. I know Randall's an Emacs guy, but you know it's it's a, a free country, a free world, and then we're you know there's, there's great editors all over the place. So uh, Brian, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you the same thing. So favorite scripting language first off? Uh, I, I probably uh, fall back to Born Shell most of the time. Mm. Uh, runs everywhere. Excellent. And uh, and how about editing? What do you use for editing? I'm an Emacs man. Yeah. For, oh, there you uh, go. See. 25 Excellent. Years. So there you go. Balances it out. Balances it out. Um, uh, somewhere, Randall's kind of cheering for that. He's a he's a big Emacs guy. And as I said, there's room for there's room for all of us in the in the world. All right. And so, um, thank you very much for coming on, guys, and telling us about Weave. If people want to find out more about Weave, they need to go to weave.works. Is the address weave.works. Um, I have to admit, I hadn't been to. I didn't know you could get a .works TLD uh, domain <laughs> until today. So that's excellent. Um, so um, Ilya and and uh, uh, thank thanks for coming on. And also, thank you to you, Brian, as well. Thank you. All right, then. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was, hang on, I'm going to get the names wrong now. I'm going to say Ilya's name correct, hopefully, again. Um, so, <laughs> so that was Ilya Dmitrichenko. And uh, uh, I've now forgotten Brian's name. It's not on the screen. There you go. Brian Borum. There we go. From uh, the Weave project. So go to weave.works and check that out some more. Um, so, uh, Gareth, what did, you, uh, what did you think of that? I was really interesting. I mean, it's always, uh, I, I always like hearing about like someone that's uh, taking an existing project or an existing technology and attempting to make it easier and more concise for people to, to, uh, to start using it. Um, so a lot of the stuff they're doing around, um, with Docker and Docker networking is, is exciting. And it'll be interesting to see how they, and and if they they're able to tie it into um, other uh, container and uh, virtualization technologies, um, like we mentioned, Rocket and, and Vagrant and, and all the others. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Docker. As, as I was saying there during the show, Docker is is kind of the um, what's the word? It's kind of the project at the moment, and it's really popular. And it's got a lot of hype around it. But um, it'd be interesting to. Um, 
be interesting to see, as you say, as uh, maybe in a couple of years' time, maybe it's not the, the 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 new thing and it's not as cool, and people want to move to something else. Be interesting to see how they cope with that kind of challenge as well. But um, very interesting, um, very interesting product. So um, I uh, I've got a few things to mention before we uh, before we finish off. Um, you may. Um, you may have noticed uh, the people who, who certainly are watching live. Last week, we were talking about uh, the show not being broadcast live anymore but um, it, and not having the chat room. But actually, um, we, we're still going. We've still got it. So uh, IRC is ticking away today in the, in the background there. And um, we are uh, still streaming live. So that's good news. So if you want to um, you want to get involved with uh, one of the tapings of the show and you want to ask questions and, and all the great stuff that helps us out when you uh, ask great questions, you can do that. Um, it's uh, re- We're moving to a new time next week we're uh, recording at 8 30 a.m uh, that's uh, leo time that's uh, pacific time um at the moment and we're moving back to 8 8 a.m so uh, not too far only half an hour but just be aware of that for uh, future shows if you um yeah if you uh, want to uh, to get involved live um okay so hopefully um hopefully randall will be feeling better soon and uh, he should be back next week i believe um, but we've got some uh, some more guests coming up let me tell you about our guests so um next week uh, june the 10th uh, that is at the earlier 8 a.m time oh actually it seems that aaron newcomb is going to be hosting next week and um he's going to be talking to um i hope i get this name right uh munir idrasi i think i'll pronounce that um i hope that's somewhere near right and um yeah and uh he's they're going to be talking about vericrypt which is uh, a technology to help you uh, improve encryption algorithms apparently it says it adds enhanced security to algorithms used for system and partition encryption making it immune to new developments new developments in brute force attacks that's quite a bold claim so i'll be interested to hear more about that um yeah so uh what else have we got following week we've got um pieros uh pap Papa Diaz, I think I'm going to say, uh, who's going to talk to us about sat nogs. I uh, presume that's how you pronounce that. Um, and that's on the 17th, again at 8 a.m. Uh, for the future shows. And uh, we've got uh, Dr. Jack Peterson and Joey Krug coming on to talk to, about, uh, talk to us about Orga, which is uh, you can find at orga.net. That's A-U-G-U-R. Dot net, uh, and that's uh, going to be on the twenty fourth of June uh, again at eight a.m. in the new earlier, uh, the new earlier um, slot. So there we go. If you want to find out who's going to be on the show and you want to know more about it, there is uh, a spreadsheet that you can look at and uh, find all this information by going to uh, our show, which is on uh, twit.tv slash floss. There's a link on the page right there, which will take you to uh, a Google spreadsheet where you can find a list of future guests. And if you want to suggest, uh, you want to recommend a project, a great open source project that you know about, maybe that you use that um, isn't on the list that you think we should be talking about, um, then the easiest way to do that, the easiest way to get them on the list is to contact the project leader or contact someone from the project and then have them contact Randall um, who can get them straight to the top of the booking list and get them in uh, in for a show. Um, so you need to uh, get them to email Merlin at Stonehenge.com. That's Merlin at Stonehenge.com. And um, there we go. So... Um, all right, then. I think that's all of, for the future shows. If you uh, want to find us on uh, Twitter, of course, it's at Floss Weekly. If you want to find us on Google+, Plus, you can find us there. Just do a quick search for uh, Floss Weekly. Uh, all kinds of other places. Um, I know Randall uses Google+, Plus quite a lot, and we get a lot of interesting suggestions from there. So please feel free to uh, to jump in on there. And uh, finally, I suppose, if you want to find out what I'm up to, uh, you can go to danlynch.org, which is at the bottom of the screen if you're watching the video, and find out more about that. Um, I've mentioned uh, a couple of times we're doing a uh, MakeFest event in Liverpool, which is a bit like Maker Fair, uh, which I know a lot of people will be familiar with. Um, so lots of hardware stuff going on. Um, obviously some software as well, but but mainly hardware kind of hacking and um, more kind of art and craft stuff as well. I'm going to be there. Uh, it's in Liverpool, uh, in, obviously, in, in the UK. It's called Liverpool MakeFest. And uh, it's on the 27th of June, which is only uh, two or three weeks away now, which is quite scary now that I think about it. So uh, yeah, if you want to find out more, just do a quick search for Liverpool MakeFest. Um, it's free to get in, I believe. Um, I think there may be an Eventbrite uh, thing where you can reserve a free ticket, just so we have an idea of numbers. Uh, but if you want to come along, maybe if you've um, 
yeah, you've got some younger members of the family who want to get into, involved in learning how to build robots and play with Arduinos and stuff. It's awesome for that. So go and check that out. Um, tonight, I'm going to the Liverpool Linux user group, although it's quite late now. Uh, so if by chance anyone's watching this live and they think, you know, they want to come along, uh, we're going to be talking about Wi-Fi, uh, community Wi-Fi projects. And uh, that's uh, at livelog.org.uk if you want to find out more about that. And I think that's enough rambling and uh, plugs for me. So, um, Gareth, is there anything you want to you want to mention or tell us about? Um, I can mention scale. Um, I, I, I'm going to be very vague about it because um, we haven't officially announced it yet. Um, but uh, scale will be moving to a new uh, venue this year. Um, mm. So, uh, and we'll have some new dates. And hopefully, our call for papers will be out this week. Um, so everyone should keep their eye on. Uh, the scale website, which is SoCalLinuxExpo.org, as well as our Twitter accounts, uh, SoCalLinuxExpo, and our Facebook page, and I believe we're on Google Plus too at SoCalLinuxExpo. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, and uh, so definitely go and check that out. I, I haven't made it over there yet. I've got to make that transatlantic trip. I better maybe get practice in my swimming stroke or, or something, or, or learn to fly, or just actually just get like a plane ticket. It's probably the easiest way um, <laughs> to come over and check that out. Uh, but I do, I do encourage you to check out uh, the Southern California Linux Fest as well. Um, Gareth, thanks very much for uh, for coming on and uh, and co-hosting. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dan. As always, it was a, it was a good time. Yeah, and I, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll manage to get the band back together again soon, hopefully. Uh, all right then. So um, thanks to everyone for uh, for watching and listening to Floss Weekly, and uh, thanks to our guests, of course. Don't forget to go and check them out. And uh, that's it for this time on Floss Weekly. We'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>